Okay, today we've got another mechanism challenge. We've got some starting material, we've got three sets of reaction conditions, and we've got a product. So we know everything involved, but we have to show how this is going to happen mechanistically. We need all the electron pushing arrows. So take a few minutes and see if you can get this one. Okay, so let's take a look at this. I've redrawn the substrate. Uh, I wanted to show all the functional groups explicitly. So let's go ahead and have, uh, we've got N-butyl lithium. So what is N-butyl lithium? It's uh, essentially a butyl anion. So we, we have, uh, it's an exceptionally strong base, but it is also an exceptionally strong nucleophile. Um, and, and it is going to do something that we, we don't see it do too often right here. This is maybe a bit un, uh, uh, difficult to predict, but this is actually going to attack the iodo group right there and leave that negative charge on that sp2 carbon. So that is the uh, energetically preferential route for n-butyl lithium to take. We're going to have that negative charge here. And then also the, the lithium cation here, let, let's, uh, just so as to not be confusing, that lithium cation is going to hang out there probably and get stabilized by both the carbonyl and that negative charge right there. Uh, that's uh, lithium Li plus, right, is going to be there. Uh, okay, so now we've got uh, TMSCl. Now what is TMSCl? That is uh, trimethyl silyl chloride. So we've got silicon, we've got three methyls, uh, and then we've got chlorine. So what is going to attack here? Let's actually, I'm going to get rid of these, uh, the lithium there because I want to show exactly what's going to happen. Um, the, the silicon can be attacked uh, by some nucleophile which will displace the chlorine. And in this case, this carbonyl oxygen is going to be the thing to do it. So let's go ahead and do that and get the TMS group on oxygen. We know TMS uh, is, is one of many uh, popular protecting groups, uh, usually for hydroxyls, but here we're going to use it in a clever way. So let's do that. We're going to leave this anion on that sp2 right there. That's going to still, we're waiting for that to do something. So now we are here. We've got oxygen. Uh, let's finish that off. We've got that there. And then we've got uh, silicon. Boom, 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 right? Here's our silicon and the three methyls. Remember, chlorine is gone, actually probably complexed with the lithium. Now the lithium can coordinate to the chlorine. We've got lithium chloride. Uh, so that's where the lithium went. So now we're here, and uh, sorry, we've got a formal positive charge on that oxygen. And so we've got a formal uh, positive charge and a formal negative charge. So what's going to happen? Now, now the, the negative charge cannot attack the oxygen uh, because this is, uh, this is already, uh, it's, got, it's got one lone pair, right? So this is not, uh, it's, it, it cannot accommodate any more, uh, any more electron density. But what this can do is attack right here, and then this will neutralize that. So let's show that we are forming the ring here. So we've got uh, oxygen and then one, two, and then this attacked right there, right? And so now we've got uh, oxygen and the silicon with the methyls, and we've got oxygen and the ethyl there. So we just formed that five-membered ring uh, that, that we wanted right there. And now we're on that last step right there. So we've got ammonium chloride. So that's NH4 plus and Cl minus. 
And so what CL minus is going to do is that is going to go and we're going to, it's essentially like a deprotection step, right? We know that this is how we use halides to, to deprotect the, the silyl ethers. So we're going to uh, attack silicon there. And now instead of just remaining on that oxygen, this can now go here, reform the carbonyl, kick off the ethoxy kick off the ethoxy, and that actually is going to get us all the way to the product. So uh, there we are. We've got our six-membered ring. We've got our new five-membered ring with the carbonyl and the oxygen, uh, and so that's it. So let's take a look. Pro po uh, possibly the most surprising aspect was what we did first. We saw N-butyl lithium. Uh, we saw the, the butyl anion uh, actually directly attacking the iota group. Um, and uh, and then leaving that negative charge on that sp2 carbon. The rest was probably not so surprising. We saw the carbonyl uh, coordinating to the silicon atom, kicking off uh, the cl the chloride, uh, get leaving the oxygen with a positive charge. That is precisely what enabled the formation of the five-membered ring, as we had this formal negative charge negative charge which attacked the carbonyl so that it could neutralize this oxygen. Uh, and then we had our third step here where the chloride goes, attacks silicon, and then we reform uh, that carbonyl but kick off the ethoxy group, and that gets us to our product. So that was today's mechanism challenge. Thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. Support me on Patreon so I can keep making content. And as always, feel free to email me, ProfessorDaveExplains at gmail.com.